G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoyed today's bloody good content, and with that said I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, let's get right into it. Cheers. Posted by user, net curiosity, titled, guilted into contributing to a family member's wedding, and I feel upset. So basically, as the title says, I'm being guilted to help pay for a family member's wedding, and I can't help but feel upset. My family is of the mindset that family helps family, and although objectively I have a better paying job so I seem better off, I also have more financial obligations. Student loans, car, home, miscellaneous expenses for other family members, etc. I recently got a promotion, and I thought that if I saved frugally, I could pay off my student loans this year and have some nice savings in the next year or so for a new home as my family is growing. Out of the blue, we have a family member getting married, and although I'm happy for them, my mom told me that she already made a promise that I would help financially. I have already provided $10,000, and I'll be expected to provide more soon. I feel upset, and I feel like trash. I know this makes me seem like a doormat, and I promise I'm usually not like this, But what else can I do when I get told that they don't have anyone else to go to besides me, and that finally things are looking up for them, and things will get better, and that our family has some good news to be happy about? I know I could have pushed back and said no, but I would have felt bad about it, and I wouldn't have felt happy that my one decision led to more problems for more people. I tried placating myself that it's okay, they have family, and I love them, and they'll pay me back so it's okay. But I can't stop feeling that because someone else wants to do things beyond their means, I have to be financially liable for their decisions. I was finally on my way to financial freedom, and now I have to start again from zero. And the costs for the wedding that I have to bear are not going to end here, which makes me even more upset. I just wanted to get this off my chest since I can't really tell anyone else about it without being seen as a prick or something. Off the bat, you shouldn't have to pay for someone else's wedding and you shouldn't feel guilted into doing that. No one is forcing these two to have a wedding. A wedding is not a necessity. They can go to the courtroom for all I care. Making sure that you are not financially free is something that your parents are intentionally doing here and they are bad people for doing that to you. You've got to take that money back OP, tell everyone to piss off, you are your own person, this is my money, I will give away what I feel like giving away and not a cent more, and everyone else that wants to be frugal on my behalf can take out loans and they can screw themselves in the process and not screw me to make themselves feel good. In the comments, NoNarwal9465 says, You shouldn't start something that you aren't going to continue doing. Guess what? You are now the person to bankroll everyone else's wedding. You need to start placing the boundary now. No more money is coming. That is it. Otherwise, they will keep on coming out with their hands out. You may ruffle feathers because of this, but they aren't entitled to your money. I don't even want to pay for a wedding for myself. No way in hell I'd pay for someone else's. I'm sorry, but you're a dummy for letting your family walk all over you. And I'm telling you this as someone who belongs to a culture where family is a big thing and we're expected to help each other. A wedding is a stupid thing to spend money on if you can't pay for it yourself. If your mum promised someone money, she can pay for it out of her own pockets. If they can't understand why it's wrong, then I would unfamily them. How does your family know that you have that kind of money? If they can't afford the wedding, they need to cut things out to meet their budget. OP replies, My parents know about my promotion, and although they don't know exactly how much money I have, they are known to make assumptions. And if I ever tell them that I don't have that kind of money, they start questioning me, and making a lot of assumptions, and guilting me by saying things like, I thought we could depend on you, and so on. I 100% agree that they need to cut things to meet their budget, but what concerns I have voiced fall on deaf ears. It's the whole family weddings are just like this debacle. Yeah, this is 100% your own fault. No one else to blame for you writing checks. The only person you should be upset at is yourself. Learn to say no. I am African, so I'm familiar with being asked for money from family. If you have a problem saying no directly, let me give you some response suggestions. 
there have been rumors about layoffs, so I need to save every dollar in the event that I am affected. I was just informed that my house needs a new roof slash septic system ASAP. Every time you are asked, have an excuse. When you make it easy for them, they keep coming back. This family wedding will hold whether or not you contribute. And if it can't hold without your financial input, then it shouldn't happen because the next thing is a bunch of kids that you will be responsible for as well. And now, on to the update. I don't think anyone cares to read this, but I'm posting it more so as a reminder to myself to stick firm to my decision. A few other things happened between my original post and now, and I went low contact with my parents and no contact with my cousin and the rest of the family. I tried to explain to them why I can't keep funding the wedding and other major milestones, and they would not understand. This was just the tip of the iceberg for me, and I didn't realize fully until I started talking. I ended up talking about how they made me feel over the years, how they essentially bullied me over my weight and looks from a young age. A 10 year old does not need to be told that she needs to be skinny because guys like skinny women, and if I'm not skinny, I won't find a guy to marry me. Mind you, sure I was a bit chubby, but still pretty normal for a 10 year old. Cue the nearly 20 years of eating disorders. How they never celebrated my accomplishments like they did for my siblings or other cousins. How they put so many restrictions on me from a young age, but my siblings and cousins could do whatever they wanted, etc. The more I talked about it, the more I realized they can't take advantage of me. My money, my time, and my energy, when it's convenient for them, and they won't even reciprocate with basic understanding. I was done with the bullshit about family and culture and whatnot. So yeah, I ended up blocking my extended family, going low contact with my parents, and my parents are in charge of collecting the money from the relatives and paying it back to me. In the comments, Alexa19714 says, Look at your brand new shiny spine. You're doing great, love. It's so shiny that I need sunglasses to protect my eyes. Good job, OP. This Reddit stranger is proud of you. Keep it up. Don't let them guilt you into getting back into contact again. Live your best life. I recommend therapy to be able to heal properly for all those years of mistreatment and process what just happened. This is giving me Asian slash immigrant family vibes. Like, of course OP is expected to contribute to the beloved cousin's wedding. It's not like she's getting any time soon, right? Note, I don't actually think this, but this is probably the family's logic. OP will be doomed to the fate of being the spinster aunt who's expected to bankroll the children's education whilst also babysitting them whenever the parents need time for themselves. You also see this in families dealing with generational poverty. The kid that is treated like shit does well to escape their situation, and the rest of the family turns on them even more and goes full crab bucket, accusing them of thinking that they are better than everyone else. And because they've never seen OP as an independent individual who has worked hard for what she's accomplished, they feel that they have the right to OP's money. God, I hate that crabs in a bucket mentality so much. It's just like, why, why do we need to keep doing that to people in this day and age? Are people too proud and too ignorant to really acknowledge the fruit of others' labor and not claim it for themselves? Because as you can see through OP's words, it's so damaging to maintain that mentality. It's also so hard to escape from that I'm surprised OP was able to grow a spine and release herself from that captivity in such a short time. Though I will say, OP, I'm very proud of you for doing so, and I'm glad that you have blocked everyone and you're moving on with your life. You deserve nothing less than people that love and support you and are in your corner and who will not rob you to save face. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Our next post is by user WarmWaterTA, titled, Am I the asshole for making my partner's drinking water too warm? To set the scene, I, 35 male, like to drink cold or chilled water, and my partner, 33 female, likes room temperature pre-boiled water. To accommodate for both our needs, we have a kettle for boiling water, after which it is transferred to two water jugs, which are either left at room temperature or used to refill the dispenser in the fridge. On to the situation. Three months ago, I emptied both room temperature jugs into the fridge and boiled more water at night before bed. 
partner came down, was furious she had no room temperature water to drink, and we came to an agreement. Don't fill up both jugs into the dispenser and leave her one. Fast forward to today, there was going to be some burst water main repairs outside by the utility company, so in the morning before my partner woke up, I decided to make sure that we had enough water to drink. I filled the dispenser with one jug and then halved the room temperature water in the other jug into both. We had previously shattered a jug on a cold day when we poured boiling water into it, so I thought that I'd temper this by making sure the boiling water would enter lukewarm water, reducing chances of shattering the jugs. I went back to work and thought nothing of it. Partner wakes up and goes down and she is furious. She doesn't have any room temperature water. I tried to placate her by mixing the lukewarm water with the water from the dispenser to make quote unquote room temperature water, but it's futile. <laughs> what the, what's going on? <laughs> Why are you going so crazy over water? This feels like if aliens tried to write a sitcom about, like, humans and they, they didn't have any idea about who we are. She won't relent. She tips the entire bottle of water that I mixed out into the sink and tries herself and can't get the temperature right either. She is absolutely raging at me at this point for not listening to her or caring about her needs. She storms out of the house in a half. So am I the asshole here, or perhaps is this being blown out of proportion and mixing water to a specific temperature is not as big of a deal? In the comments, one mediocre man says, Info, what the actual hell? I think that's the only reasonable question. I also want to know, what the actual hell? I would love, like, a hot water, but if you just let it sit so it cools, I just need to know that it was once hot. <laughs> Sorry I'm the worst. What's this? I didn't ask for this. What is this? Lukewarm water for ants? There are four types of people in the world. Those who look at a glass and say that it's half empty but too cold. Those who say that it's half full but too warm. Those that say that it's too cold but half full. And those that say that it's too warm but halfway. Wait, where was I? I can't even give a judgment. I... I don't understand what's going on. Basically, the first time she had two jugs of room temperature water, then OP went into the kitchen, and when he left, she had zero jugs, and he now has two jugs of cold water. Then she asked him not to do that again, and he agreed. Then the second time she had two jugs of room temperature water, until OP went into the kitchen. After that, OP had one jug of cold water, and his partner had two jugs of hot water. Cue a bunch of people saying she should take care of her own damn water when she had two jugs until OP touched them both times. Also, cue a bunch of people calling her insane for caring what her water temperature is when OP cares so much about it that he'll take all the water to make it his temperature. Back up to the post. Edit. Okay, wow, this really blew up. Who knew that water would be so polarizing? I never thought that this post would start lukewarm water gates. I just got off work and reading through all the replies. Looks like there's lots of questions, so I'll do my best to answer them and provide some clarity. Thank you everyone for the comments, the stories, the judgments, and everything in between. I appreciate all the input so far. There's been some great takes that I'll take to heart and consider properly, including how best to communicate post Watergate with my partner. So, more info. Who boiled the kettle and filled the jugs the previous night? I did. Why did you touch all the water? Well firstly, we don't have one jug for her and one for me, we have two jugs for the household, me and her. I forgot about the water mains being repaired until early this morning when the trucks showed up and they started working. I rushed down and made sure that there was enough water for the both of us, not just me. On top of filling all the jugs in the dispenser and boiling another kettle full of water, I also filled a few sinks so that we'd have extra water to flush the toilet if need be. I honestly thought the water would be cool enough by the time she woke up, since it's a cold day, but I guess I was wrong. I didn't expect her to react the way that she did. Is she OCD? No, she's just pedantic about certain things and needs them to be a specific way. But I don't think it's any more demanding than any other person who is neat and tidy and has certain idiosyncrasies. 
Why don't you drink from the tap? Slash, are you Asian? Yes, we are an Asian couple. Many of you have guessed that. Drinking boiled water is cultural and a preference. There is nothing particularly wrong with the tap water in our country in Australia, but it tastes better to my partner after being boiled. Warm, but not boiling water tastes different than cooled to room temperature boiled water to her. I will drink water straight from the tap every single day of the week. I love my country's yummy, mineral-tasting water. Maybe there's a little bit of dirt in there, but that's what makes Australia great. Connor does not have a gun to my head right now. He is not forcing me to say that. These are my own free will opinions. So it's a preference. I prefer chilled water, but I would happily drink room temperature water or even warm water if there wasn't any chilled water. I drink what we have, but preferred to have chilled. It doesn't affect me in any big way. This morning, I just filled everything I could, including the dispenser. Why don't you use ice? Well, I can definitely use ice, but our fridge has a built-in dispenser that we have to manually fill, so I do that from time to time with water from the jugs. Normally, I'll only ever use one and leave one for her. This morning, in my haste, I used both as I wanted to make sure everything was full. Dispenser, both jugs, and kettle. Why don't you have more jugs? Trust me, this is definitely our next step. As well as the breeder water filter, but I'm worried that she might not like the taste. Plus, she might insist that we boil it first before it goes into the breeder. Why did you pour half the water into an empty jug and fill both with boiling? Well, as previously explained, we shattered a glass jug on a cold day, previously boiling water directly into it, because... science. I don't know the physics here. Anyways, I was trying to avoid that, and thought the boiling plus room temperature water would cool sufficiently by the time she woke up, but I calculated wrong. Anyways, I hope that clarifies most of the questions. I'll post an update once we've reached an amicable resolution, and my guess is that it's not about the water as some people have already said, but there's other underlying issues, and this was a trigger. Thank you for taking an interest, and for all the comments. And now on to the update. So two years on, I thought I'd make an update to the original debacle that confused everyone and had polarized the community. There was so many comments. Some incredibly emphatic and helpful, some racist and mean, but generally I don't believe there was ever a consensus reached. Despite all that, I was incredibly grateful to all the comments received from everyone. Whilst I didn't take the time to reply, I actually did read through all of them. On to the update. So as some people pointed out, our argument was not really about the water. Generally, in every relationship, every person just wants to feel seen, heard, important, understood, and loved. My actions that day didn't make her feel that way, and in and of itself, was more indicative of a longer-running issue between us in our relationship. For a bit of background, we both have or had childhood trauma, and the beginning of our relationship was quite volatile. Defying the odds, we stayed together and got married, however... Marriage doesn't solve those issues. Over the last two years, we've continued to stay together. Yes, we are still married, much to the chagrin of those who were advocating our divorce, side eye, and continued to grow together. I swear to God, people are just inventing words. I've never heard chagrin in my entire life. Does anyone really just throw out chagrin, just conversationally? Really? Believe it or not, the incident involving the water was a bit of a catalyst to us having better conversations regarding how we're going to resolve our own trauma and improve our communication. Much to the chagrin of Marky, they fixed their relationship problems. Long story short, she got therapy, I got therapy, we did some marriage counselling, she got more therapy, I got more therapy, and it's been a journey, but a worthwhile one. When two people really do love each other, and want to work it out, they'll find a way to. I'm so genuinely grateful for my wife, who she was, who she is now, the strength that she has, and the belief that she had in us, and more so in me. Much to the chagrin of Reddit. Our communication is better than it's ever been, our intimacy is stronger than it's ever been, and we are at such an amazing place. The future looks incredibly bright. 
It took a lot of work to get here, and there's a lot more work left to be done, but we have each other's backs, and we'll keep going together. Thank you again, Reddit, and whilst this update might not be what some of you were hoping for, it's where we're at now. In the comments, Little Be Thy Blue says, Okay, so I gotta ask, how many water jugs do you have now? OP says, We have four. Two for her, and two for me. You're the asshole. Nobody cares about therapy, communication, and self-improvement. We were here for the jugs, and you left us waiting. The jugs, OP. The jugs! You should take a bow for such a Hall of Famer Am I the Asshole post about water. There's been a whole summer of dreadful stories by out-of-school angsty teens who just want to rant. This issue was legendary, and I hope you two eventually found some humor in it as much as a lot of us did. OP says, Haha, <laughs> yes. Looking back now, it's easy to find the humor and laugh together at the water, the jugs, and everything. I'm amazed as anyone that the original post set off everyone as much as it did. When I go back and reread it, I can sense the frustration, confusion, and overall panic in my tone of voice, and in the way that I explained the situation, it really was frantic and all over the place. Another commenter says, But I still don't understand. Why the water? Wife must have felt seen, heard, blah 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 in other ways in the marriage. What was it about the water specifically that set her off into a raging asshole? OP doesn't say. OP replies, There was nothing specific about the water per se. I think of it as the straw that broke the camel's back. Whilst it wasn't our biggest disagreement or fight, the fact that it was over something so trivial made us both sit down and talk about the ludicrousity of the situation and realize there's way more underlying issues at play. To be honest, I glossed over a lot longer of a journey that we've been on. For some periods, it was actually kind of touch and go for our relationship. It was like a swinging pendulum over the last two years, with periods of feeling hopeful, optimistic, loving, to periods of frustration, disconnection, and despair. Much to the chagrin of Reddit. And it was honestly really over the last six months that we started getting it, with it being reaching a place where we are emphatic to ourselves and our past childhood traumas. It's ridiculous how much that stuff affects us into our adult lives, and then secondly, being truly emphatic towards each other, and lastly, communicating in a way that doesn't trigger the other person, and being aware of our own triggers. And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!